Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Fort Knox, Kentucky. I am Major Roderick Mack, your narrator for today's ceremony. At this time, we would like to welcome all general officers, senior officers, and distinguished guests. Today's ceremony honors the successful completion of Advance Camp. The graduating unit for today is the 4th Regiment of Advance Camp, the General Gordon R. Sullivan Regiment. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Cadet Vernell Stewart from Texas A&M University, Central Texas. The color guard is comprised of cadets selected by the regiment. They are led by Cadet Ashley Braderhoff from the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. Also participating in today's ceremony is the 1st Armored Division Band from Fort Bliss, Texas, commanded by CW3 Michael J. Moore. To your right, you see the salute battery provided by the Steel Squadron, 3rd Cavalry Regiment from Fort Hood, Texas, and led by First Lieutenant Nicole Walsh and Sergeant First Class Colt Southen. This ceremony marks the culmination of 38 days of rigorous and intensive training for these young men and women. For them, advanced camps served as a test of their leadership abilities and potential to be an officer. They have emerged from this challenge confident in their ability to assume the tremendous responsibilities of being an Army officer. The cadets of the 4th Regiment are now formed in front of you. Each regiment has had the honor of having bestowed upon it a namesake. This namesake is in honor of a general officer whose values and accomplishments represent the best the Army has to offer. Fourth Regiment has had the distinct privilege of honoring General Gordon R. Sullivan. Gordon Russell Sullivan graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in history from Norwich University in 1938 and was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Army branch. During his Army career, General Sullivan served as Commanding General of the 1st Infantry Division at Fort Riley, Kansas, and Deputy Commandant, U.S. Army Command and General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth. His service culminated in his appointment as Chief of Staff of the Army, during which time he created the division and led the team that transitioned the Army from its Cold War posture. His overseas assignments included four tours in Europe, two in Vietnam, and one in Korea. In honor of their completion of advance camp, the cadets from the General Gordon R. Sullivan Regiment will be receiving a three-gun salute in the form of a cadet cannonade. In a moment, the commander of troops will bring the units to attention and present arms. The reviewing officer officers. for today's ceremony is Lieutenant General John Kolaszewski, Commanding General, United States Army Fifth Corps. He is accompanied by the host and the regimental tactical officer, Lieutenant Colonel Daniel J. Gross. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the interest of the official party and remain standing for the rendering of honors to the reviewing officer and the invocation offered by Cadet Chaplain, Second Lieutenant Sylvia Bennett. Thank you for keeping them all safe through this training 
and we thank you for the resilience each one of them has shown to make it this far in their journey. And now, Lord, I ask that you will continue to bless them as they go forth to become the next great leaders of our nation's army. Help them to continue to excel in their studies and help them to always adhere to the army values. Please keep everyone safe as they travel to their respective destinations and continue to guide their paths according to your will. It is in this I pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Colors are now being brought forward by the Commander of Troops. The flags present for today's ceremony are the National Colors, the Army Field Flag, and the Cadet Command Colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of our national anthem and remain standing during the firing of the cadet cannonade. We ask that military personnel in uniform maintain their hand salute until the completion of the cadet cannonade. The United States Army ROTC Cadet Cannonade salutes the three pillars of service to the nation. Duty. Obedience and discipline performance despite difficulty or danger. Duty requires self-responsibility and selfless devotion. Honor. Encompassing integrity and dedication. Honor is the thread which holds together the fabric of our Army. Country for which men and women have given their lives, all country shines as a light of freedom and dignity to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
The Cadet Creed was adopted to instill in Army cadets the values that are critical for successful performance. Cadet Miles Alexander from the University of Washington will now recite the Cadet Creed. The Cadet Creed! I am an Army cadet. Soon I will take an oath to become an Army officer committed to defending the values which make this nation great. Honor is my touchstone. I understand mission first and people always. I am the past, the spirit of those warriors who have made the final sacrifice. I am the present, the scholar and apprentice soldier enhancing my skills in the science of warfare and the art of leadership. But above all, I am the future, the future warrior leader of the United States Army. May God give me the compassion and judgment to lead and the gallantry in battle to win. I will do my duty. Leadership and excellence serve. The greater community of Fort Knox and our national and local service organizations are here to show their support to our future Army leaders. These cadets have demonstrated superior character and service throughout training and will be recognized for their efforts. We kindly ask family and friends to remain seated during the awards presentation. The awardees will be brought forward immediately following the ceremony for pictures. The AUSA Leadership Excellence Award is presented by Michael Pesco. The award is presented to the top cadet in each regiment, as determined by a regimental cadre board. This award is presented to cadet James Schottenkirk from Methodist University. The Military Order of the World War Awards is presented by Colonel Retired William Beston. The award is presented to the cadet who best demonstrates the ability to evaluate, analyze, apply, and understand experiences and capabilities to solve tactical problem sets. This award is presented to cadet Regents Massonot from Florida International University. <laughs> the Military Officers Association of America Award is presented by Colonel Retired William Beston. The award is given to the cadet that has demonstrated superior dedication to duty and established a positive command presence by accepting accountability for self and assigned unit through employment of team members while applying the fundamentals of leadership. This award is presented to cadet Kaylee Lichtenstein from the University of Iowa. <laughs> the Bold Leader Spirit Award is presented by Sergeant Major Retired Robert Moore to the cadet who best demonstrates appropriate motivational techniques, inspirational leadership, and the spirit of a leader. This award is presented to cadet Carlos Delba from Fayetteville State University. <laughs> the USAA Warrior Spirit Award is presented by Sergeant Major Retired Joe Zotomoyer. It is presented to the cadet that best demonstrated the personal actions necessary to represent the Army profession, ethics, and officership while best exemplifying the warrior spirit. This award is presented to cadet Jonah Andrews from Point Loma Nazarene College. <laughs> the Armed Forces Services Corporation Award is presented by Megan Huffman to the top male and female cadet who achieved the highest score in Army physical fitness. This award is presented to Cadet Morgan Davis from Clemson University and Cadet Dorlin Castillo from the University of Puerto Rico, Mayaguez.
The First Command Financial Service Award is presented by Petty Officer First Class Robbie S. Smith to the cadet who best demonstrates the leadership traits necessary to encourage teamwork, improve unit cohesion, and reinforce mission accomplishment. This award is presented to cadet Anna Cavadelisa from Westchester University. The Armed Forces Bank Award is presented by Lieutenant Colonel Kurt Schultes to the cadet that best demonstrates respect for other cultures and people by effectively utilizing the training scenarios to demonstrate a mastery of cross-cultural competencies as they relate to a complex environment. This award is presented to cadet Jacob Horitz from Georgetown University. The Reserve Organization of America Award is presented by Colonel Retired Clifford Bernstein. The award is given to the cadet that embodies the characteristics of a comprehensive soldier by demonstrating resilience, the lifelong pursuit of enhanced performance to cope with adversity and stressful situations, and thrive in life. This award is presented to cadet Austin Graybrook from Kansas State University. The National Guard Association Award is presented by Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Whiteland. The award is presented to the top Army National Guard cadet in each regiment, as determined by a regimental cadre board. This award is presented to cadet Jack Anderson from Texas A&M University. The Recondo Award is presented to the cadet who has displayed individual superior performance and was a first time go in the heavy physical band of the Army Occupational Physical Assessment Test, was a first time go on written land navigation, achieving a score of 90% or higher, finding five out of six points on the land navigation course, was a first time go on first aid in chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear defense events, completed the six mile foot march in 90 minutes or less, and qualified sharpshooter or better in basic rifle marksmanship. The following cadets from 4th Regiment are awarded the Recondo Badge and have been identified in your program with an asterisk by their name. At the completion of the ceremony, today's awardees will return to the field for individual congratulations and photo opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving our awardees a round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the guest speaker for today's ceremony, Lieutenant General John Kolaszewski, Commanding General of the United States Army, 5th Corps. Good morning, cadets of 4th Regiment, the Currahees. Sounds like we're still asleep this morning. So let's try this again. This time, when I say 4th Regiment, I want you all to sound off with Currahees. Good morning, cadets of 4th Regiment. OK, we're kind of moving in the right direction. Now, I, as I was doing physical training this morning, I heard you out here rehearsing, so I know that you've been up since 4.30. So I, I am actually going to take a, a, a play out of uh, General Evans' playbook. Now, he said 25 minutes. I think it's about 20. But let me go ahead and let you guys go to uh, rest. So go ahead and go to rest. Okay, don't fall asleep on me, but just go to rest. Okay. My name is John Kolaszewski, and I'm a Fifth Corps soldier and a very proud ROTC graduate of Bucknell University, class of 1989. <laughs> Go Bisons. And I have to admit, John, I'm, I'm surprised that there were no Bucknell cadets up here getting recognized for, for uh, uh, distinguished service during cadet summer training. It must be for the 5th Regiment, right? Or one through three. There was, a, there was an Aggie, yes. Uh, we have a daughter that goes to Texas A&M. Uh, but Hey, I, I tell you, I, I am just uh, really, really proud to be up here, especially for the 4th Regiment, uh, a regiment that's named in honor of General Gordon Sullivan, uh, who is somebody that I hold uh, in the utmost respect, somebody that commanded the same division that I commanded the Big Red One. 
and who is also an armor officer. And so I know in this regiment, uh, you are going to really knock it out of the park in terms of the numbers of people that sign up to go armor. Uh, so all kidding aside, I, I'd like to thank General Evans, Sergeant Major Gann, uh, for giving me the opportunity to address you, you, the future of our military. To the families and friends of these future leaders, I would like to thank you for the support you provide while they have made this journey. While their initial start may have been arduous, the challenges they have encountered or will continue to com uh, encounter will need and necessitate, and necessitate your support. So thank you. Continue to provide a guiding light. They will need it. To the cadre, the professors of military science, the APMSs, uh, and the many NCOs and soldiers that make this training event possible, thank you for your efforts. It was the many hours you dedicated that attributed to these cadets' success, so thank you. As I look across the crowd, I see droopy eyes, and, my, and I am reminiscent of my own experiences at Vance Camp. Yes, I know that that was only a few years ago, but I am sure the sentiment remains the same. With that said, I will keep my, briefs, my comments uh, brief, down to 20 minutes. This year marks the 246th anniversary of the United States Army. That is 246 years of history in which the leaders across our profession have made significant impacts that have not only shaped our military, but have also led to momentous change across our nation and across the world. Over the last several years, you have been groomed with modern versions of the same leadership theories and operational methodologies as those who have come before you. All of this to include cadet summer training was designed to build your understanding of the profession in which you are about to enter. I can stand here and lecture you with stories of grandeur, but instead I want to plant a seed. Our military is in the midst of transformation, transforma transformation and transforma tra transformative change. We are focusing on modernization and innovation, and none of this can be done without people. The leadership roles that many of you will assume following your commissioning is an endeavor in understanding, working with, and yes, leading people. If you leave here today remembering anything, I hope it is with these lessons that I've learned in, over my, in my over 32 years of service. One, you need to move as a team. Two, you need to learn the art of conversation. And three, respect everyone and stay humble. Throughout your career, you will be placed on multiple teams. They will be comprised of people from varying walks of life and skill sets. There are occasions when you will be the one in char charge and times you won't. Understand that those moments where you are not in the lead are just as important. The role of the follower is essential to mission and organizational success. The follower carries the water and answers the mail by being a supportive foundation for those who are in the lead. So follow enthusiastically. Be motivated to jump in and help solve the complex problems we face today and those that may arise in an uncertain future. When the opportunity comes for you to lead the pack, remember to look back toward those following you. Someone may be carrying a ruck that's heavier than yours and may need a little bit of help. Trust me, it's not fun to be the person carrying, in my days, the M60 machine gun during a 12-mile foot march. So whether you are conducting a squad attack, dipping the oars as a member of your collegiate rowing team, or even building some awesome PowerPoint slides that depict your unit's road to war, remember to move as a team. I'm sure at some point, you have encountered the phrase, leaders are readers. I agree wholeheartedly that as leaders, we must be well-read. I would also offer that we must be engaging. Technological advancements have made it possible for us to access 
information at the touch of a button. Just a few years ago, ideas such as video calling were rudimentary and in the military only available to highest echelons of command. That's not true today. Unfortunately, while we have gained an improved ability to communicate, we have lost our ability to be connected. I'm sure this sounds contradictory, but bear with me as I elaborate. Conversation is an art. Being connected to people is an art that when executed effectively can and enable your ability to influence others. It requires you to be competent enough to express your thoughts, patient enough to listen for, to understand, and intelligent enough to explore ideas and opinions that might be contradictory to your, to your own. And that's okay. Your ability to converse with and engage others is critical in how you interact and how you interact with those around you. You must be clear and concise in the points you are making and in your efforts to be easily understood. So whether you are asking a fellow platoon leader for assistance on an assigned task, conducting your first range brief to your battalion commander, or giving your first op board brief to your platoon, the art of conversation is key. Cultivate this valuable skill. Lastly, in this profession, you will interface with people. Your ability to work as a member of a team and ability to communicate will shape your interactions with those around you and really solidify your reputation. Always remember, how you treat others matters. Were you the one that made them feel that their service was valued? Were you the one who helped them in a time of need? Or did you let them fail? And kind of closing, always be humble and always be respectful. That's your legacy. That's your reputation. And it's important. Congrats on reaching this milestone. And good luck as you're as you return to your respective campuses to finish out the remainder of your coursework. I'm confident that your instructors are just as proud of you and excited of you as me and your family are. Remember, it is our very varied backgrounds and experience that make us such a strong and respected institution. Now it's your responsibility to help those freshmen and sophomore be successful uh, as they get further and further in their cadet studies. So again, congratulations. I need you to now go make history. People first, it will be done, victory. Curry's, go ahead, attention. Parade, rest. Okay, again, thank you and good luck.
this time, the cadet regiment will perform the ceremonial passing review. Please remember to stand and render honors to the nation as the colors pass. Now passing the reviewing stand is the 1st Armored Division Band from Fort Bliss, Texas, commanded by CW3 Michael J. Moore. Now passing the reviewing stand is the commander of troops for today's graduation, Cadet Bernhill Stewart from Texas A&M University, Central Texas. <laughs> now passing the reviewing stand is Alpha Company, led by Cadet Justin Minucci from Pacific Lutheran University. Now passing the reviewing stand is Bravo Company, led by Cadet Mason Deverick from Washington State University. Now passing the reviewing stand is the Color Guard, led by Cadet Ashley Braderhoft from the University of Colorado in Colorado Springs. Now passing the reviewing stand is Charlie Company, led by Cadet Roxana Pujillo from Austin Peay State University. Now passing the reviewing stand is Delta Company, led by Cadet Michael King from the University of Tampa. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Army song. The words can be found in your program.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 4th Regiment Cadet Summer Training 2021 Graduation Ceremony. As a reminder, this ceremony can be viewed at futurearmyofficers.army.mil or youtube.com. Family and friends, please allow a few moments for your cadets to prepare for departure before joining them at the tents to the right side of the field. Each cadet has a different instruction depending on their next mission. If you have any questions after speaking with your cadet, feel free to ask any of the cadre members for clarification. For your enjoyment, while you wait, we have a COVID-friendly small reception set up to the rear of the reviewing stand. Thank you for attending. Leadership excellence.